listeners, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. You're joined as usual by myself and my colleague Lauren. Uh, if this is the first time you've tuned into us, then make sure you sign up either via YouTube or your favorite podcast aggregator because you're going to love our content. That's how confident we are. We've also got a Facebook group called The Snowy's Camping Show where you can join in on conversation on this episode and all of our past episodes as well. If you've got any questions, jump on there, ask to join the group and you can ask for our opinion outside of the episode. And we'll give it. We'll give it. We'll yeah, give our opinion yeah, we'll for give sure. It straight, yeah. yeah. Um, today we're talking about uh, something that I – Think I probably overtook being such a priority with camping, and that's mm-hmm. coffee. It's yeah. like the first thing that I pack in the car. Um, and we're talking about how you can make coffee, good coffee, camping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I it is the first thing I put in the car when I go camping. I don't go without coffee. I once forgot coffee filters. I think I've talked about it before and had a little little tantrum. <laughs> Still my space you. for a little while. Having a tantrum. Just leave me alone. Yeah. I, need, I need the space to work out how I'm going to survive. Thankfully, yeah. I had another mate that made me a coffee, but. Um, you're kind of in a bit of a yeah. I uh, recently, within the last couple of months, have given up coffee for various reasons. Just um, and it's been good for me to have given up coffee, but I do really miss it. I really loved my coffee. Would drink a lot of it, and sort of cutting it down still wasn't helping things that I needed help. So um, <laughs> I do miss it. So it's a bit of a bittersweet episode for me. But I have made lots and lots and lots of coffee camping over over the years. So, um, I yeah. don't know what I'd do if I was told I had to cut coffee for a bit. I think my mm. wife would probably just kick me out of the house while I, I think a lot of people were like that I'm down off of my, I don't know, addiction. I don't, is it an addiction coffee? I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, I think it depends on the person. I mean, some okay. people, well, I mean, it's caffeine. So caffeine is addictive, but whether yeah. or not you as a person are okay with, you know, can take it or leave okay. it. It's different. It's but some people, path. yeah, some people <laughs> <laughs> love love coffee to the point where, like you, they are a bit of a connoisseur or a bit um, snob. I've snob. said before, I'm a yeah, self-professed snob. coffee snob. Yeah. Um, you know, some people can have instant coffee, take it or leave it, and other people are like, nah. So <laughs> well, when you are camping, obviously instant coffee, first and foremost, is the most sort of easy, easy convenient mm. If you just – you don't care, you just want to get some coffee in you, that's a good option. It is. It's – for hiking as well, mm. it's a really good option because it's lightweight. It, you just need water to go in it, mix it with a bit of powdered milk. Yeah. It's, it's a really no easy way to make coffee. No waste, yeah. Um, yeah, that's it's a no-brainer way, I yeah. suppose. But for me, there's a lot of things I'd have before I go to Instant. Mm-hmm. I've, I've On the odd occasion gone to Instant – because mm. I've gone, oh, I'm just going to have instant. It can't be that bad. And it's one of those things. It's a bit like having KFC, right? I have it once every like five to ten years just to remind myself why I don't have it very often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm probably saying that everyone, people there who love KFC, but it's just not something I enjoy. So Yeah, um, I don't need it either. Ca- instant coffee's like that for me. Like that. Yeah. Well, I think um, also these days the options available for you when you are camping or on the move or hiking or whatever to have proper coffee is really vast, mm. whereas, you know, 10 years ago you didn't have a huge amount of portable coffee-making options like that. No, and um, even the instant coffee was even more like powdered cardboard, I think, back then. Yeah. yeah. It's maybe improved a bit, but I haven't delved into the newest ones. But yeah. sorry, I interrupted you there. No, that's okay. Um, But I guess one of the most popular ones I think here at Snowy's, even amongst the team, is the AeroPress. I think yeah. most of us have got one. Um, I know in our old staff kitchen we used to have one because it was just easier and made nicer coffee than having a coffee machine or, or mm-hmm. what have you. Um, yeah, we've got a few things sitting on, on the table in front of us here for those mm. who are tuning in. And the AeroPress here is certainly is my AeroPress we've got sitting here. And, yeah, I think I, I like it mm. because – it offers a really good balance between that espresso you make at home where you have a small espresso shot and you stretch a heap of milk with steam and you make a nice espresso coffee. Mm-hmm. You can't always do like that much milk on camping is harder to uh, to heat up and you can't stretch it yeah. unless you've got a, a massive inverter and you've taken your coffee machine with you. Yeah. But this one I find it, you end up making sort of a long black and then you can add a little bit of milk to it so you're not carrying as much milk or worrying about heating yeah. the milk up. Yeah. You're relying on the hot water. You're just boiling water. So you could mm. boil water for your dishes, use a bit for your coffee, and then you've got 
got it left over for dishes. So you're kind of being efficient in how you, how you use it. The so. other thing I like about it is that it essentially, for people who haven't used it anymore, it's sort of like a, a, a plastic plunger system thing that you have a filter on the bottom. You can get paper filters or you can buy a reusable metal filter and it just sits on top of your cup and you put your coffee in and then you fill your water up, your boiling water up, and then you put the little plunger thing on and you push it down straight away. So yep. there's no waiting. It's pretty much instant. It uses the coffee grounds and you get a really, lovely tasting coffee even gives you yep. a bit of that creamer stuff on the top yeah. especially if your coffee grounds are good and you can either put in a little bit of water or you can put in lots and lots of water and it makes it really easy if you do just want a short sort of more of a shot of coffee or you want to make two coffees for two people or you want to just make a long black it's really quite versatile and straightforward and that you could play around with lots of different ways you brew it as well you can leave it sit for longer Definitely. you can do it quickly you can put more more coffee and less coffee it's yep. it's um it's really yeah, easy, can, you, you easy to, to use. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's sort of, I think it's like a, a lighter weight, more sort of easy used version of a standard French press, which yeah. is something like my parents have in the camp trailer. They've got like a big French press thing. So it's something which people would more likely have in a caravan or a camper trailer where they've got like a fixed kitchen set up. Yep. Um, we had a bit of confusion, didn't we? When you say French press, we were talking yeah. before the show around just what some of these things are called and it's yeah. turned out we've sort of what we call something is it's different in our different. minds to what other yeah, people totally. call it. Yeah. So by French press, in my mind, it comes up to the what we've got on the table here is a glass uh, jug with a plunger in it. Yeah. Is that what? That's what I'm talking that's about. That's what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like they're probably the go-to historically anyway, the go-to portable espresso coffee option mm -hmm. or grounds coffee option, and you can get them in lots of different sizes and things like that. But, you know, being glass and being a little bit chunkier, they're not – necessarily is easy to pack. So that's why you'd probably have them more often than not in a caravan or a camper trailer or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You can get sort of plastic ones, you, but you can also make large batches of coffee. Mm. If you've got a big one, you can make coffee for a group of bit easier than those, whereas the AeroPress is probably one or two coffees. Yeah. So a good option there. You have um, other another option one of my mates uses and absolutely loves is the stove top. Mm. Um, what I call espresso maker. Some people call them a percolator or whatever, but they're like where you put your boiling water inside a stainless steel thing mm -hmm. and then you put your filter with the coffee and you screw it on and then you put it on your stove and then yep. as the, the water, water pushes boils, up it pushes up through the yeah. coffee and it comes out the spout. Yep. You can get them at home, but then there are more compact versions for camping as well. Yep. We've got a little one here which just makes a single shot of espresso. Mm. I used to use those before I had the AeroPress, mm. um, but I found it didn't – make heaps of coffee and you need yeah. to put a fair bit of milk in it. So you then needed to work out how you were going to warm that milk up as well. So Yeah, it does make much like a much sort of stronger, more intense sort of 30, 40 mils of yep. coffee, doesn't it? Yeah, mm. than, a, than a French press. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. stronger. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is a lightweight versions of, or probably drip coffee actually more so. We've got across the other side from where I'm sitting, it's a, a Java press, I, th I think what it's called, a J Java drip or something. But it's mm -hmm. a really lightweight option and there's also versions of that for camping where it's a um, little bit like those um, American style um, coffee machines with a big jug they put in the Which is what the, I call a percolator. You call it a percolator, yeah. right. So yeah. they, they just use by a filter in the top right um, uh, or similar to this in the, that what we've got sitting in front of us here mm. is the filter essentially and you put coffee bean, coffee grinds in that yeah. and the water just drips in the top of that through the coffee and down through. So, so it's not forced through. through. Yeah. yeah. It's, I would still have that before a An instant. instant coffee. Yeah. But I don't personally like that flavour as much. I find it not as strong because mm. it's not kind of forced through the through mm. the grinds as much, but that's just my take on it. Yeah. But there was, um, I remember going back quite a few years ago, there was a, a 12 volt, and a, not 12 volt, I think it was actually gas operated version of a, of, of a one of those percolator things with the glass yeah, jug right. in it. I think Coleman made it. Yeah. It didn't last for very long, but it was kind of unique for a while. This, yeah, I can like, a little bit, maybe big. a little bit gimmicky. One maybe. of the things that people look at and go, oh, that's amazing, but they get it and they actually don't really use it that much. Maybe. That maybe? Probably. It was a bit of a one-hit wonder. It came yeah. out and everyone kind of went, oh, that's pretty cool. And we sold a few and then it disappeared and yeah. no, no one else jumped on board. So it obviously wasn't wasn't that that like viable. When you can get fairly simple options like this and you're already mm. heating up water in a gas stove anyway. Um, There's also the the very hardcore version of a cowboy coffee, which is the. <laughs> I've not heard of cowboy coffee before, yeah. and it come up right before the episode. But yeah, this go is ahead. for the most hardcore of of you out there, um, and it's like similar to where you'd put a billy with tea leaves on, and you just boil your tea over the fire. You do it with coffee in like a billy. Chuck your coffee and chuck your water in. Yeah. Boil the bejeebus out of it when it's cooked. Coffee settles, and you just pour that straight in. Yeah. But I reckon it's like 
you know, I think I mentioned before, like it's brutal. It's like Turkish (laughs) coffee. You could stand a spoon up in it. It's only for the, it's not for the faint of heart um, and it's rustic. We just call it rustic. I have images of like old swaggies that, you know, you know, like (laughs) the, um, the gum leaf or eucalypt tea where you put the gum leaves in your boiler and then you, and then you just swing Swing this billy around like a windmill for a while, while all the, to to make all the leaves settle to the bottom. Totally. I've got images of that with, um, yeah, with ground coffee like that, but it must be, I don't know. I, I, look, I, Try it before instant. Uh, yeah, I try. <laughs> I, I think it's one of those. Yeah, you'd probably put a nip of whiskey in it too, maybe. maybe. I don't know, something like that. It sounds, it sounds. It sounds really brutal. It does. I don't know how you get all the grinds out. I don't you, know. Or maybe you need to, something. To I think it's just one of those things where you just you just have to commit, and you just you know just just have the crunchy bits. It's, it's in an with experience. It. Yeah. Okay. It's a bit like having <laughs> chips on the beach. It comes with yeah. a bit of sand. Right? Bit of sand. <laughs> Do you take it or leave it. <laughs> yeah. Totally. There's one we haven't talked about, which is probably actually uh, equally as popular as the Aeropress, and that's mm-hmm. the um, Wakako Mini Presser or Nano Presser. They do yeah. a few, few different versions right now. They they're kind of like a little miniature proper espresso machine where they mm-hmm. actually. Um, force hot water through the grinds in a similar manner to what Mm -hmm. the the coffee machines do in the cafes that you see. So that then produces a small shot with a big crema, but you need to heat up the milk to go in that as well. Yeah, and you also it's um, they're not battery operated or powered, so you boil your water first as well. But I think one of the reasons why they are so popular is because – I personally don't use coffee pods, but coffee pods are popular these days. And um, the Wakako coffee machines, they give you the option of of either getting one that does pods or getting one that does coffee or then, mm. you know, there's an option of getting one that means you can switch between them. Yep. Um, and I know a few people who use reusable pods that they sort of pack before they go um, and so they have that pod version. Yep. And there are, you know, there can obviously be limitations with it, but essentially, um, yeah, it's just a small, compact, and as you say, it makes a really sort of it's, it's a like really a, fancy coffee. Like a, yeah, like a thirty mil espresso shot with a thicker yeah. crema on it. So. Yeah, and there, and again, with as I said, there are a couple of different options there. There is one model where you can get an addition to it, which means you can make long blacks and double yep. shots and things like that. So off the shelf, um, though, I'd say that makes kind of like your espresso shot. And then if you're mm. kind of grading that against the rest of the machines we've talked about, at the other end of the scale, you've got your French press or your drip coffee, yeah, where totally. it's not as weak. And the Aeropress, I find, kind of sits in the middle because you do yeah. sort of force it through the grinds at some sort of pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can kind of go almost both ways with the yeah. Aeropress, which is why I think a lot of us really yeah. like it. So and its simplicity, definitely. On the Wakako, though, you mentioned pods, right? Now that brings up the topic of waste. Mm-hmm. Um, two things. Firstly, with with pods, obviously it it is wasteful, and as we all know, I mean, you can recycle pods, but that does yeah. rely on people actually taking them to the recycling place yep. and recycling them. Um, you can get reusable ones, uh, but then you have still got the grinds that you should get rid of. Now that is probably going to make people have a bit of a think about how do I get rid of this when I'm camping because they're just grinds, right? It's a bit mm. like we just throw an apple core on the ground, it'll decompose, it's all right. But if everyone that went camping in the one campsite has been booked out day after day after day, right, for for many weeks, yeah. if everyone drank coffee and everyone threw out their coffee grinds every yeah. morning and every night and every lunchtime, if you drink coffee as often mm. as I do, um, there's going to be a lot of coffee grinds around the campsite, right? They yeah. don't decompose within days. So I think you still got to carry your grinds out yeah. with you. You do. Yeah. I mean, I personally would as well. You probably would might have some success given what it is if you were to put it in your fire, if you had a campfire, it oh, might maybe. sort of burn away. Yep. But if you're not having a campfire, I would, yeah, I probably wouldn't leave it or bury it or chuck it in the bush. I'd probably just take it because yeah. as you say, if everybody does that, then you just, it's just going to be gross, isn't it? Fire is probably a good option. Mm. I think just chuck because it's only a little thing that's going to yeah, and also talking about the waste and also pod coffee, you know, people who do use reusable pods and they pack it before they go, you can also get things like coffee bags. And mm. I know you can get the coffee bags pre-made already like off the shelf at the supermarket, but you can even possibly make your own up as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the coffee bags aren't, in my experience of using like the coffee bags, they're like the tea bags or whatever, they're not very strong because no. you just sort of put them in the boiling water and you dunk them around a bit and it's not using pressure to force water through the grounds or you're not boiling it as is. It's, it's sort weak. of a bit weak. And yeah. 
I find you still get that caffeine hit from that without nothing. a real coffee experience out of it. But yeah. That's just my take. I think it's probably also that the grinds inside those bags were, were ground and packaged mm-hmm. a long time yeah, before. Yeah, they've been sitting, yeah. yeah, and it's not like they're, you know, when you buy coffee grounds as well in a bag, it's sealed with like the special mm-hmm. sort of air tightness and the, the freshness valve and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. You don't get that same level of care with coffee bags. Yeah. So I don't think. That takes me to think in, in my coffee snob ways. Mm. Uh, at home, I grind my beans mm-hmm. for every every um, uh, cup of coffee that I make, even to the point that I don't Do put you? too many beans. So you buy in the whole hopper. beans, whole beans yeah, and, you, and you've yeah. got a little grinder. Yeah, you are well, a snob. It's a, it's a it's a I've got a coffee corner in the kitchen, right? It's a it's an electric <laughs> grinder. Corner. Yeah, and yeah. I don't put too many hops even in the beans in the yeah. uh, so hops. I'm talking beer now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> too many beans in yeah. the hopper because yeah. I don't want them to sit out in the air too long. I leave them sealed up. But that's just going a bit silly, probably. But anyway, another story. But um, wow. So you actually have a hopper grinding bean? Yeah, thing. it's a little thing. Like you put the beans in the top, and then you just flick the switch, and it grinds it each time. Before. So it's not like one of those little ones where you just put it in the top and you press the button and it goes and then you tip it out. It's an actual hopper bean grinding. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. You're just looking at you like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Anyway, another story. Another but, story. Um, so when I go camping, though, I'll take okay, mm-hmm. in, the, in the bag we've got in front of us here, yeah. um, I'll take ground coffee. Yeah. But I notice the difference between coffee sealed with those little valves you talked about it before, mm-hmm. the keep fresh valves. I notice the difference between that and freshly ground coffee. Now, I haven't gotten to the point of actually grinding my own coffee when I'm camping, I yeah. haven't found a, a good grinder to, yeah. to do that. So I use ground coffee, but maybe that's. We do. There is the one that we sell. I think, I don't know, Travel Chef or something, they sell it. And it's like a, a little coffee espresso maker kit thing that also has a ground grinder on the top, but it's sort of like you, you're grounding that's single right. use and it's manual. And you can adjust the grinds and things like that, but it's not going to obviously be as good as your at home benchtop. Hopper yeah. coffee grinder. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, am, I do want to find like a little, they call it conical bill, right, with these mm. proper grinders that actually grind the coffee properly. But yeah, okay. Okay, fancy pants. If I ever pants. find one, I'll let everyone know on the Facebook group. Yeah, do or it. Or if you've got one, let me know because yeah. I need one. Yeah. Um. So also um, just quickly as well, there are, like we're talking about the French press and the AeroPress, there are some options where you, the French press, Thing of me, Bobby, I'm not sure how it works, but it stays inside the same coffee vessel. So oh, it's sort of bean, like you're making. The down the bottom, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you just sort of make your coffee in the same vessel that you're drinking it out of. Yeah, so you plunge it plunge it down. I think that's one we've got in front of us here. You plunge mm. it down and then they just sit in the bottom, right? So, yeah. And you just drink out the top. Yeah. I, I, I find it gets a bit bitter because it sits there too long. Yeah. But that's just me. Laura's um, just playing with the. This yeah, it's sort of like moment, got a couple so. of different chambers in it, sort of like a water filter bottle type thing and it that way you can – but it's good, I guess, because it's insulated and it's not like you're having to go from your coffee maker to a separate cup and things like that. Yeah. But it's probably a good option for a single or a solo coffee drinker. It's a cool idea. It I is a cool idea. I probably wouldn't leave it in there too long because it's probably just going to get kind of um, bitter, I yeah, think, over time. So probably. these clunking sounds that you can hear, Lauren, just – Just me playing, playing around with, with the, the thing on the thing table – Working out, it's what it's called. It's a, that's the GSI um, commu- Java, commuter, commuter Java, Java press, press or something. Yeah. But yeah, so but you can get like thermoses and flasks, and um, there's even some really cool like it's actually like a mug with a handle, but it's double walled. So mm-hmm. even though you're using it like a normal coffee mug, it's still insulated to a certain extent. Keeps it warmer. Keeps for it warmer, yeah, which is good, good for really hot mornings. I mean, yep. cold mornings where you want your coffee <laughs> to stay hot if you're not drinking it. Or hot mornings where you want your iced coffee to stay cold. It's yeah, well, thing. iced coffee, now you're getting fancy. No, I don't do iced coffee. Yeah. There's more milk in iced coffee. Yeah, We're just talking hot coffee today. We are talking hot coffee yeah. today. But double wool mugs are great for um, – mm. I've actually got um, a kit that Cedar Summit make that's got – it's like a little takeaway cup. It's got a silicon lid on the top so I can make my oh. own takeaway coffee while I'm in the Yeah, that's cool. There. It's really cool. Yeah. It, it's not double wall insulated, but mm-hmm. it's a reasonably thick mug. It's still yeah. lightweight and it keeps it warm for as long as my coffee lasts. Yeah, anyway. is, that's the one that's got that sort of grey insulated spongy sleeve on it. Is yeah, it? it's got a little yeah, sleeve yeah. around it as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I which I don't use. I had one of them. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. So lots of, lots of options for those. Milk as well. If you're a coffee drinker and you have milk – there's a couple of different options. So obviously I mentioned before powdered milk, I think I mentioned, Mm -hmm. like if you're going hiking and you want to use or make your own coffee bags, you can put instant coffee and powdered milk and even sugar sort of in your same coffee Mm -hmm. bag. If you want to be that level of prepared, make your own coffee bags. Was that, I hadn't heard of that before now. So I'm taking a step back now. 
Do we have- yeah, it's sort of like I, I guess you can – I reckon I would have seen somewhere where you can get bags like either lightweight muslin bags or actual sort of reusable fabric bags that you can put oh, your right. own tea and coffee and whatever in or you could also make them yourself with like percolator paper if, yeah, right. if you wanted to, if you're that yeah, hardcore. That. that sounds cool. Yeah, and I think it's probably a good option if you are going to be doing multi-day hiking and you don't want to carry more than is necessary and it's all, you know, ready to go. You've just got your your, your coffee yeah. ready to go. Well, a little but, bit of muslin or cheesecloth is, weighs nothing, yeah, right? And a totally. And string and you can just tie it up. That's yeah, right. That's a cool idea. And powdered milk also is um, really lightweight and it doesn't go off. It doesn't require you to have refrigeration yeah. or whatever, but it's also powdered milk. Like some people- not quite the same. Yeah, not quite the same. Yeah. Some people might not be totally into it, but- I go um, UHT milk when I'm camping. I yeah. prefer to go fresh. I take fresh with me to start with and then move to UHT. Yeah. Obviously for- I mean, you can, it depends. I guess it also depends on how much you use milk. So, l- like for us, we don't really drink cow's milk or use milk. It's only, it would only be in the morning for cups of tea and things like that. Okay. So, taking, um, taking smaller UHT things can be handy, especially if you yep. don't have a fridge, you can get like a six pack or whatever, but then there's waste and extra rubbish and things you have to recycle or take yeah. out with you. Um, but you can, you know, obviously get your one litre UHT milks. And then if you're using that, there's not too much that you have to put, even if you've just got an fridge. esky and ice to keep it cold and yeah. things like that. Um, yeah. What about some um, frothing the milk? Now this, we had discussed this before because I went, frothing's not the same because Proper espresso is stretched, right? It's steam that goes into the milk and it stretches and you get that nice creamy kind of thing with really fine little bubbles in it. I feel like I'm going to say every episode that you're a massive geek. <laughs> Just when you're into something, you're into it. It's like you're talking about isn't, stretching the milk. Isn't geeks, doesn't that refer to like I mean IT it as a term of stuff endearment. Just, okay. All right. I'll take it as a compliment. You should. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but right. frothing, right? You frothing. Just, we've got one in front of us. It's a little mm. frother thing. It's about your bread. It's kind of cool, but yeah. all it does is just put bubbles in the milk. Mm-hmm. So I'm not making a milkshake. I'm making yeah. a coffee. <laughs> but that's just me. And yeah. I'm probably going to, maybe I'm going to offend some people, but. Yeah, you can buy these little battery operated frothers. So if you if yeah. you do want to have your froth, it's like on a your little coffee. a little whipper. We've also got it in front of us here. If you're watching it, um, watching us on YouTube via our little sort of spy cam thing, or uh, if you're listening to us, it's like a little handheld um, battery operated milk frother with a little sort of baskety thing on the end of a swizzling stick and you press a button and <laughs> it just sort of stick. goes <laughs> and frizzles and whips up your milk and anyway. like it will you know some people really do want frothy milk but it's not going to give you the same sort of milk as if you're steaming it of course um i think there's ways to kind of froth it using a french yeah. press and stuff as well that we've seen online yeah. I, i've not tried any of it but um for me i, I think just- you, you got to preheat your milk i think if you're doing it with a french press you preheat your milk and then you put it in the french press and then you just uh, really fast plunge the the french press up and down and it sort of aerates it okay. but again it sort of makes it frothy i think more frothy. along the lines of a 90s uh cappuccino 90s <laughs> yeah, style right cappuccino yeah. with you know your, of- your your twin peaks of fluffy foam yeah. with your chocolate sprinkle chocolate on, the on the top yeah nice yeah <laughs> Uh, I reckon uh, we should probably keep moving on. I reckon yeah. uh, we've talked like for 20 something minutes about coffee here. We have, and yeah. They thought we couldn't do it. Um, but now they're <laughs> going to say, you need to wind up. Yeah. So, no. what, what else should we, what else can we say to help people? Um, well, I think if coffee? you're choosing how to make your coffee, one of the first things to consider is are you doing stovetop coffee or are you going to predominantly use a campfire? Because not every single option available for, for portable coffee making is going to work for both. Um, so, yeah, obviously things like, you know, your stovetop percolators and, and what have you are going to work on stovetops. If you're going to do your hardcore cowboy method with your billy and things like that, mm-hmm. chuck it straight on the fire. Um a lot of the the off options do – there's nothing that will heat water on its own, right, you know? Like no. we're not talking about 12-volt or powered options. So, um, yeah, you're going to have to take into consideration that you will need to heat your own water before you're making your coffee for the yeah. most part. I have a think um, about whether you want to use it for hiking as well. But yeah. I know the AeroPress, they've got an even more compact version of the one we've got in front of us here, which you could take hiking so you yeah. can use it for dual purpose. So. That's right. Um, when um, – me and my friend, when we travelled overseas for a good couple of weeks, she had an AeroPress. That was before I got mine, and uh, we bike packed and hiked and things like that. Um, and lived out of our backpack. It was definitely, you know, worth taking, worth taking that for sure. No matter where you are, to have a bit of coffee grounds in your AeroPress. Um, so it's definitely not that big a deal to take it. But if you are a super ultra light, um, 
hiker, hiker yeah, there are like that Java GSI drip or that GSI Java drip or whatever. I don't even. It's a good option, Java drip. Like that's yeah. that do, probably doesn't even weigh fifty grams, and or I can scrunch it up to yeah, the size tiny. of a golf bo- ball almost. It's like, yeah, it's tiny. really tiny. So, um, yeah, having a think about if you are gonna invest in in making good coffee. Just yeah, the versatility of each option and and how you're likely to use it and things like that. So and ha- have yourself a kit too. Like we've got this is what they, they call it a coffee kit bag in front of us here. I've got a little kit like that that I use, and it's just my coffee stuff that goes yeah. in there. And yep. in the morning, that's what I grab. There's enough in there for me to, apart from the milk that's in the fridge. Yeah, I can get the coffee going with everything that's in that. Yeah, bag absolutely. Put your a, coffee maker yep. in your grounds, like everything you need, just in that bag. Good for a roadside stop as well. You don't have to unpack your entire kitchen kit to make yourself a coffee Absolutely. during the day if you're doing a road trip. That's such a good point as yeah. well. Um, what else are we going to talk about? Uh, I feel like I'm, that was silly for we, me to say that. but Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I think we've probably covered most most things to do with coffee in terms of when you're camping and things like that. Um, we touched on iced coffee. I guess you could make coffee ahead of time in summer, brew it and then put it in a thermos like you said before. Yeah. I don't. I like to make it fresh once again, but you could make it ahead of time. You could coffee in a thermos ahead of time, or even hot coffee. Yeah. I don't like the taste of it as much, but if you're on a road trip and you need to do quick stops, then that's a good option. Yeah, to make it fresh at home. Definitely, I still do that before instant. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, also you can, you know, if you get up and make your coffee in the morning, if you if you've got an esky, you probably wouldn't want to be putting hot coffee in to cool it down. But you know, you can make it in the morning or even the night before and chuck it in your fridge freezer if you've got one. Then you have got like a nice sort of cold cold drip coffee or things like that. But um, I reckon we've covered up pretty well. We have. I hope we've helped people. Yeah. Get drink get, better coffee. Drink better coffee. Have a better coffee camping. experience when you're on your trip and don't be like Ben and have a big man tanty when you <laughs> when you leave it at home by mistake. That's the first time I've heard someone call a lot of man tanty, so my, my wife's going to watch this and have a good laugh. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> oh. So if you have any awesome coffee tips for when you're on the road, then jump onto our Facebook group and uh, let us hear them. Also tell us about your own coffee setups as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you have haven't done so already wherever you're listening to your podcast or even on YouTube as well. Uh, I think that's about it for today, Ben. I think we're done. I'm off for a coffee. Off for a coffee? No worries. <laughs> well, we'll catch you next week, everyone. See you guys. Bye.